Good morning. I'm just going to acknowledge our name. We gather today and walk the history of a healing journey, acknowledging the purpose, role, and the suffering of our indigenous brothers and sisters, recognizing that apologies are necessary, not only once, but time and time again, to educate people of the ongoing injustices and work to renew the respectful relationships. We pay our respect to the original caretakers of the land by acknowledging that we live and worship on our indigenous brothers and sisters land. <coughs> Oh, 
tried many things with past and the peace and it last while, trying to keep everyone well. And I thought we'd try one more. So I'd like to have Sandy and Ashley come to the front. So everyone is to get two, so that they can pass it back to another. Tricky, isn't it? Sometimes we get good gifts, and then I think they're just fine. But we're intended, right, to share that. Does everyone have one? Good. Okay. Okay, so now, now that they're not in your mouth, we are going to sing from God. Voices United, 585, Jesus bids us shine.
so, what is Jesus? When we think about this time, time, what is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Light of the world. Yeah, that's right. So, we're going to say, it only takes a spark. Do you know that song? Do you know that song? Come on. I think we know that song. So let's teach these young people it only takes work.
So they knew, wow, this is something. So when you go downstairs, you're going to learn more about the transfiguration. And hopefully, you know, it will be something that will keep you inspired. Can we do the Lord's Prayer again? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we're going to have our anthem now from our lovely father. Thank you. several announcements today. And most of them are found in your bulletin on page four, five, six, and seven. Wow. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot going on. Before I forget, I will say that the year-end tax receipts are available today. And please see Kathy Baxterville after the service to get yours. Uh, Janet has a. Jewish Community Center, or Jewish Community Speaking 
um, these days. So we will continue with the same format with the speaker and then lunch to follow. So if anyone has any special soup recipes or any Western recipes that they'd like to share with us, we would welcome them up to just speak to me if you can help with that. Thank you. And Lisa? Not too much technical experience required for that, but you do actually need to, you know, spend some time with Lisa. Thanks, Tabitha. Um, this one thing here, to grow up in a prayer, I think we might have had a temporary glitch or something here, but um, it says that I need some volunteers to help, but I'd like to know before that day that you would like to help, so if you can come and talk to me after church during coffee hour, um, that would be great, and we can set you up with a position. Um, if you just first come at one o'clock, we might set you up with something where somebody didn't show up and said they were going to. So, uh, anyhow, it is important to get. But on top of that, I really encourage you to come to our World Day of Prayer. It's a very um, a hard experience. Um, so thank you very much. <coughs> So as you can see, there's several announcements there, and if you need clarification on any of them, please, you know, ask either the person who's listed or one of us, and we'll try to get you more information. I was looking for pie eaters that thought they needed volunteers for that, but there is pie making coming up, and I think that you could come and help with that, even if you have not done that in the past. So feel welcome. On the back, you will see something else that can be confusing called another journey into Lent, which is a continuation of the Bible study that's on Wednesday afternoons. So after discussion with Gabrielle, we decided it was something completely different than having this the first time. And so this is a journey through Lent, looking at the scriptures and searching our hearts about what Lent means to us, preparing us for Easter. Any other announcements? Okay. Who will you join me in saying the new creed? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We do not see God. We are all to the church.
God said to Moses, Climb higher up on the mountain and wait there for me. I will give you tablets of stone, the teaching and commandments that I have written to instruct them. So Moses got up, accompanied Joshua, his aide, and Moses climbed up the mountain of God. He told the elders of Israel, Wait for us here until we return to you. You have Aaron and her with you. And if there are any problems, go to them. So Moses climbed the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain, and the glory of the God of God set settled over Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, he called out of the clouds to Moses. In the view of the Israelites below, the glory looked like a raging fire at the top of the mountain. Moses entered the middle of the cloud and climbed up the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And Matthew 17, 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus went up to the top of a high mountain with Peter, James, and John. There, something spectacular happened. Jesus' face began to glow and gleam and shine like the morning sun. His clothes gleamed to bright white, like sunlight mirroring off the snowfall. He was, in a word, transfigured. Suddenly, there on the top of the mountain were Moses and Elijah, those icons of faith, the love of God, and they talked to Jesus. Peter said, Lord, how amazing it is that we're here to see these heroes of faith, these men through whom God spoke. Should I quickly build some shelters? Three small tabernacles for you, Moses, and for Elijah. And as Peter spoke, a bright cloud enveloped all of them. And the voice of the cloud said, This is my beloved son. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This voice from heaven terrified the three disciples, and they fell prostrate on the ground. But Jesus, who was by the time used to his disciples being plagued by fear, he touched them. Get up, don't be afraid. And when the disciples got up, they saw that they were not alone with the Lord. They were now alone with the Lord. The four men hiked back up to them, and Jesus told his disciples to stay silent. Jesus said, don't let anyone know what happened here, not until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The word of the Lord. We're going to read the prayer of the people for us. The Holy One on mountaintops and valley floors, you reveal to us the light of your love. Your heart desire is to bask in the amazing glory of the divine presence. With each encounter, we are changed and transformed. Draw us nearer that we might receive a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as reflections of the divine glory. May we walk amongst our brothers and sisters as a blessing, bearing light in dark places, hope to despairing places, and the love that casts out of hate. We know your desire, you desire mercy more than sacrifice and a contrary heart rather than burnt offerings. We will follow Jesus' example. We will be a people who forgave one another and honored each other. Amen. Can I call upon uh, the offering servers?
we proclaim not ourselves but Jesus and commit ourselves to follow a way that leads to love and life. May our sacrifice be a witness to our love for each other and the God who loves us all. Amen.
his plan that is for all of humanity. Lent is a time for us to get serious about who we are, who we are called to be, and what we are called to do as Christians. You see, Lent is not about pancake suppers and ash crosses on the forehead and Seder meals. It's about what God has done by becoming human, living among us and demonstrating life the way that he wants it to be lived. It's about breaking the barriers that sin has raised between us and the flow of God's Spirit in and through us and in the world. But let's stop for a minute. What exactly has God done in and through his incarnation as Jesus? Well, the first thing he's done is that he has given all humanity, not just a part, not just a little bit, not a certain country or certain people, but all of humanity a way back to him. And God has done everything necessary for all of humanity to be in a loving relationship with him. And God has set his Holy Spirit free in the world to bring all of humanity together into his kingdom. God has made it possible for all of humanity to live in harmony with him with this world that he has gifted us with, with each other, and live in harmony within ourselves. All of this is God's great, amazing, and incredible gift to us in Jesus the Christ. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection has made it possible for the world to be transformed into what it was meant to be. For you and for me to be who we were created to be and to be in loving community with God and with each other. Friends, Lent is meant to be a time when we stop. Stop dead in our tracks and take time to remember and give thanks for God's gift to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. This is what John 3.16 means. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is what the Apostle Paul meant when he said in his second letter to the Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, the new things. He also said later on, Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. Are you starting to understand why we can never, why we must never take Lent for granted? Are you starting to understand why Lent is a time, an important time, a serious time, of reevaluation, prayer, and fasting. You see, the creator of the universe has done something that we cannot do for ourselves and no one can do for us. He who created from nothing created everything. And it is this God who existed before time, began saying to all humanity, you may have screwed it up, but in Jesus, I'm going to fix it up. You see, receiving a gift is different from opening a gift. But here's the thing. 
There's something interesting about gifts. They are just pretty wrapped packages until you open them up, take it out, and use it. The gift that God has given us through Jesus is nice to think about, but useless unless we accept it and let it into our lives. In the book of Romans, Paul wrote that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, I had someone give me a birthday card once, and I opened the card, and I, the envelope, and I pulled out the card, and I opened the card, and whoosh, stars and hearts burst all over the place. This is what God is saying to the world, to you and to me. Here is the gift. Now open it and let the new life I want for you burst open. The gift accepted will burst open, but it also needs to be embraced. You need to learn to use it. A vast majority of those who say they believe in God through Jesus Christ base their faith on a Sunday school understanding. The Apostle Paul in his letters to the churches stated often that the people were being fed milk. And he said to them, it's time that you stop being fed on milk. It's time that you start to learn about the meat of faith. To really experience the blessings of God's great gift to humanity, we need to learn how to live this new life that God has given us. In his second letter to Timothy and in his letter to Titus, Paul instructs them to teach people under them sound doctrine. However, this learning to fully integrate itself needs to be taken and used in our lives. Now, I want to pause here for a moment to do a little faith check. And, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to, to raise your hands. And it's not intended to make you feel guilty. Well, okay. <laughs> Depends on your answer, you may feel guilty. <laughs> but what have you done in the last year to intentionally grow in your understanding of your faith? And what have you intentionally done to implement that new understanding into your life. Do you remember the commandment that Jesus gave to the scribe who questioned him about what was the greatest commandment? Remember? Jesus answered him and said, The foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. That's everything. Nothing left out in that. You are to love the Lord your God with all of who you are. <laughs> Jesus said that our top priority was to love God. And how do you show your love for God? Jesus, Jesus clearly informed us about this, shared this with us. In the Gospel of, Gospel of John, three times he tells us how to love God. If you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. Later in that same chapter, Jesus said, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will disclose himself to me. 
And later in the Gospel, 15th chapter, he says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You see, we show our love for God by intentionally growing in our faith and living out our faith in our day-to-day -day lives. This is why every congregation, every congregation, needs an intentional discipleship formation program where people can come together to learn sound doctrine and godly practices for living the Christian life. Someone once asked me, what is it that makes you want to grow in your love for God? And my answer was simple. Because He first loved me and died for me, that I might have the kind of life He wants every human being to live. Paul says it probably better. He says, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And that life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When I first met my wife, Deborah, I instantly fell in love with her. So much so, I asked her to marry me on our first date. <laughs> she said yes. The one thing I realized almost immediately is that she felt the same. And one of the aspects of that love was her unconditional love for me. And the only way I could think of to show her how much her love meant to me was to try day by day to demonstrate my love for her. And I know that I have not done that as well as I've wanted to. But here's the thing. She's always willing to forgive me. Friends, this is the closest example I can give you to why I seek to grow in faith and live out my faith each day. God has shown me, and you, a love far greater than even the best love we can experience for another human being. A love that always and in all ways seeks our best. So much so that he gave us a life manual, the Bible, to show us how to live in harmony with him, our world, with each other, and within ourselves. So I need to say it again. This is why I tell every congregation at which I speak, you need to have an intentional discipleship formation program, which, as the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 4, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ until we all maintain, attain to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature person, to the measure, the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. And here's this, here's the result. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, which causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. This is why Lent is so important. It gives us a chance each year to remember. To remember God's great gift to us. To remember that that gift changed and continues to change history. To 
to remember that we are loved by the creator of the universe and to remember that he wants us to love him and he has shown us how. All we need to do is follow the life manual he gave us. But there's one more part to that gift. The gift makes you and me, brothers and sisters, in God's family. You see, when we allow God's love to fill us, and we love Him by obeying His commandments, then we are family together through whom God works to show His care, His support for us, and to enable us to live our lives the way Jesus would live our lives if He were us. This is why every congregation also needs a small group ministry where three to twelve people meet on a weekly basis to allow God's Holy Spirit to move among them and to give them a place to practice love, Jesus style. A gathering of people who together learn to live in faith every day. I like to call them life groups. Living in faith every day. <coughs> Friends, Lent reminds us that God took the first step to bring us all back to Him. And the theological word we use for that is reconciliation. We need this reminder every year because, well, the church is not about one hour a week gatherings or about committee meetings, or fundraising to keep the building open and to pay the minister. Oh, and that's important. <laughs> we do those things. But they are not what we are all about. They are to simply support us in doing what we are really all about. Growing in our love for God through Jesus. And as we do that, now hear this, because it's important. As we do that, because it is God's plan for us to help His children, He calls us to be part of His reconciling every human being with Him. In 2 Corinthians it says this, Now all these things are given from God, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us, to us, the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors, ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you, said Paul. <clears throat> on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. The gift we have received, we are to offer to the world through our outreach and our witnessing. That's a fancy way to say we show people what God has done in our lives through our reaching out to people beyond the church, showing them God's love. And then when we have the chance, we tell them why we do what we do, and then most importantly, we invite them to be part of God's family. You see, we do good works, not for the sake of doing good works, but that they would highlight God's love, who is offering them the same love through Jesus Christ. And so, we receive the gift, we open the gift, we embrace, embrace the gift, and we tell people about the gift, and then, and this is the most important part, and then we introduce them to the gift giver. Lent is a time to put all of this back into perspective through taking time to talk with God, grow with God, walk with God, share God with others. Hallelujah. And amen.
would ask that as the elements are being served, that you would hold on to them. Uh, you will receive the bread, and then you'll be receiving the, the wine. And uh, would ask that you hold on to them. And as we are going through the, uh, the communion, you will be told times that you are to eat the bread or to drink the wine.
took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after supper, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man go, <clears throat> goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And he began to question one another, and they began to question one another, which of them was that to be. A dispute also arose among them, which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so for you. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the one who serves. For which is the greater, one who sits at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at, ta at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigned to me, a kingdom, so that you might eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on my thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread of which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. We come to the Lord's Supper together as children of our one God. Jesus makes the guest list, not us. Our family, chosen by God, is gathered from west and east, and includes everyone, even the lowest and the least. Jesus, when he was resurrected from the dead, revealed himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread around the table. May we see the face of God today as we come to the Lord's table. On the night he was handed over, the night before he was crucified, Jesus gathered his friends for a meal. He took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. Christ's body broken for us. Please pray with me. Jesus, as we take this bread, let it be a sign of all you did for us and who you are for us. Thank you for this bread of life. sharing the bread, Jesus took a cup of wine and gave it to them, 
to drink. Saying to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Let us pray. Jesus, as we drink this cup, let it be a sign for us of all you did for us and who you are for us. Thank you that you bring us peace that passes all understanding. Jesus, through your death and resurrection, you reconciled the world to God. And through your example, you have shown us a way to peace. Give us strength as the people of God to be channels of peace in the world. Speaking your peace, living your peace, and always longing for that moment of eternal peace. And together we all say, Amen. We stand for our final hymn, Break Now, Thou Bread of Life. church to shake hands and to, um, and to give hugs as people leave. I, I prefer that, but I will take your candies as you leave. <laughs> <laughs>
Just a reminder to everyone that, of course, everyone is invited downstairs now for uh, a time of uh, refreshment and chatting and getting to know each other a bit better. But there's also another important celebration we're doing downstairs. I don't know, someone around here's 98th birthday is here? Good. Shake hands and that, so I'll give up taking the candy for you to give them to him. <laughs> 